no worries. I'm just, I just wanted to let you know my situation and how I had very little ability to troubleshoot. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah. So we're yeah. live. Yeah. Okay, great. Welcome to the Porthole to Justice. <laughs> hey, Amelia, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, and thank you so much for coming on. I was, I, I did several introduction shows prior to this, and I was sharing about web investigations. And okay. um, you've, you've done some really extensive um, connecting the dots type of work. And um, I'd love it if you'd share some of that with us. Sure. So today I'm uh, um, on a uh, I'm in the process of filing a lawsuit against uh, what is a spying in Congress. So it's a ringleader by the name of Imran Awan who is working kind of on behalf of Debbie Wasserman Schultz to it looks like dope phones as well as laptops in Congress for the equipment that Congress gets, as well as maybe other people that are involved in the defense community, mm -hmm. um, maybe people that are involved in large uh, military bid situations in the Defense Logistics Agency here in, in Virginia. Um, and, um, and so we're working with a lot of data sources that have not come public yet. We're trying to discover those data sources through this, through this lawsuit. Uh, it's a civil lawsuit. I've tried to intervene in the criminal case uh, where the prosecution wasn't pursuing uh, these crimes, um, but we've kind of shifted over to a civil lawsuit that we'll be filing here soon, probably this week in the district of D.C., uh, downtown Washington, D.C. Wow. So yeah. you, you're, you're kind of like... What do you, okay, I have like a couple of questions I want to, I have a lot of questions I want to ask. Um, sure. And I didn't know about the lawsuit, so. Okay. It's always good to give your uh, listeners the latest and greatest, right? Yeah. So yeah, you're no, breaking I, the story. You're breaking the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I didn't know about the lawsuit and I, you know, we, I'd love it if you keep me posted on that for sure. Um, yeah. So, I. I wanted, I guess what I wanted to ask you about was the, the Chicago political police organ trafficking, all of that sort of, um, I think you've done like 200 stories on, um, Jasmine Holland or Sh Sh Shaka Shakur. Uh, no, <laughs> Uh, I recognize those those names. I think as rappers. Uh, I think that is that the station there. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I'm in a I'm in a lift. I think uh, I okay. I think I recognize those people as rappers, but that I I've, I've never done any shows on them. I think Shakur is probably Tupac. Is is that Tupac? Yeah. Um, and then, um, but no, I haven't. I've never done a, a show on on that. What I have done is I have I have looked at the history of the CIA and uh, a, a company that they tend to work through as an agent called DynCorp, D-Y-N-C-O-R-P, and there's always kind of that CIA wink to their names, DynCorp, like like we kill people for fun and, or, or profit. Mm -hmm. uh, so so DynCorp is, uh, is the company that has had this really poor record. Oh, okay. Um, uh, DynCorp has had this really poor record of uh, when uh, a conflict situation occurs in the United Nations, they come in as a peacekeeping force and they train the peacekeepers. And a part of that is uh, taking kind of the spoils of war. So they start this human trafficking. Uh, they, in Kosovo, uh, going back there, that's where they started this practice of, well, you know, these are prisoners, these are bad people. Let's not let their organs go to waste when we kill them. Uh, and that's where this organ harvesting started. Um, and, you know, is it a child bride? Or, you know, is a 15-year-old a child bride when they're sold off to an oil shake or a local dignitary? Or is that child trafficking? Is that uh, human trafficking? Mm -hmm. So um, the problem when you have that kind of bad route... Thank you so much. Say goodbye to my Lyft driver. The problem when you have that kind of bad seed... Uh, being planted all around the world around these uh, peacekeeping efforts 
by the United Nations is they it, they tend to want to do the same thing in every country. They don't like to have a manual that says, oh, we can do this in Congo, but we can't do that in Rwanda. And we can do this in Kosovo, and we can't do that. They'd like to tend to standardize their operations. And you get into a real problem when you start bringing that into to democracies like Europe. Mm -hmm. And then you start bringing that into democracies in North America like Canada, Mexico, <coughs> and Haiti. And then you're especially troubled when you say, well, a couple of spots in America wouldn't hurt. You know, we could do a couple of spots. And Chicago just has to, happens to be the kind of the test market. <coughs> so if these prisoners are going to die anyway, they're really, really bad people. Their organs are going to go to a waste. Mm -hmm. So is it really organ harvesting or is it them just being good stewards of dead bodies? You know, uh, you, there's arguments, you know, it, it isn't just black and white. I'm not saying people are being killed for their, you know, organ harvesting. What I am saying is there are people who actually think they're really doing a great service by anticipating the death of prisoners in Holman Square pr prison, which is a dark prison. It's a secret prison. It's very much like a torture center that the CIA would have built secret prisons all around the world. They typically do this through DynCorp or some third party. Mm -hmm. And then they psychologically torture these people, psychologically operations, sometimes physically torture them to where the person wants to commit suicide. And yeah, well, we, we see... you have a body now and you have organs. So that's that's kind of how it works. Yeah, we and, and that's where we see the the targeting, you know, going on, I think. Um, when it starts, you know, it's becoming more and more prevalent, George, like where people yeah. people are noticing it in their own communities. They're noticing the tactics now. They're becoming aware. And it I mean. Well, the, I think the couple of key reasons, what you're talking about are, is called low intensity operations or low intensity conflict. People can Google low intensity conflict if they want to see. But the idea is soft war. Um, you don't have the, let's say, the congressional approval or the international approval for hot war. So that shouldn't stop you from still getting what you want from the country. So you, you declare this soft war or low intensity conflict. Mm -hmm. what, it, what it does basically is you infiltrate all the government, all the people in the government, especially prisons and any type of law enforcement. You infiltrate like we have done here in the United States with the JTTF. And these are people that look like police officers. They act like police officers. They have guns, they have badges, but they're the nighttime police officers that really never go into the office. They never report. They don't know anybody else. They never are trained in the things that you think normal police procedure with training they're a secret prowler team they're a night force kind of a prowler team and these are the people that do harassment and this has been around my dad was in world war ii the japanese had harassment troops that would come in every night this has been a part of psychological operations and, and warfare for a long long time the problem comes when you privatize when you start privatizing independent security companies of let's say 20 to 25 people. A lot of times they're extended families, two or three extended families with all the people in the family. And you make this a company uh, for security and DHS hires this security company. Now mm -hmm. you have people who are not sworn actors. They have the incentive like private prisons. They have the incentive to privatize surveillance. They have the incentive to privatize harassment, mm -hmm. right? So these private security firms are the problem. Sorry, there's Canadian geese flying over me. <laughs> Must cool. be getting cold for the winter. <laughs> cold for the winter, and the, so and Donna Dana Priest from the Washington Post. She won a Pulitzer Prize for the incredible work she did on the series called Top Secret America. Top Secret America. She said there's two thousand of these private firms. Well, and she pointed out this is not necessarily. This is kind of like a private secret police. Mm -hmm. They're not sworn. They're not. There's no oversight. There's very little reporting on JTTF teams. They work through these fusion centers, so they're given all this information about their targets, but there's no accountability. They use this prism system. Everybody's familiar with from the Snowden yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and you know, it's kind of like 
you know, I usually cover I usually cover CPS corruption and the pedo gate aspect within CPS, but it's I, I liken it to the sim, similar to like social workers. They're very compartmentalized. They get all this information and they think that they're doing a good service to the communities. Oftentimes the children that really need the services are being neglected and left to die and then the the parent good parents are being targeted and we see this very often and, and it, it, it's it sounds similar to the way these secret police operate as well yeah i mean dine Corps teaches the surveillance so you can go to their book and you can see their training manual it's just basically the army psyops manual that i think you put on your website you know general uh what's his name uh, uh reamer uh, r-i-e-m-e-r you know the yeah. psyops manual of 2007 yeah. it's basically dine Corps just remarkets that they cut, tear the top sheet off and they put their logo sheet on the front of it but it's the same idea the idea being that these are political targets these aren't targets for people who've committed crimes I want to be very careful about that they're usually journalists you start with journalists first Mm-hmm. People who are not, uh, you know, don't agree with you, who've, like, for whatever side of the political spectrum. And then you slowly uh, just use these different groups to introduce havoc in their life. It's called uh, disruption. Some people call it the program. Some people call it, um, you know, uh, decomposition. They called it in Germany. They called it decomposition. But it's basically soft war, soft, you can opiate uh, targeting is you know get the person on drugs get the person to use uh, you know lure them into a, a, you know, try to get them basically to kill themselves there's street there's street theater there's many different tactics you had even yeah. mentioned to me that there's actually like a pokemon game that well what i'm saying is you could write applications for the best things in the world you know you could write i could put out DHS and say, I want to write an application called Amber Alert. Amber Alert's going to be great. It's going to send a message to all these law enforcement. We're going to look at suspicious persons. We're going to send yellow alerts. We're going to send orange alerts. It's going to be great. And the people writing that application think, hey, this is really a great idea. This is exactly what happened, by the way. DHS did commission and they did write Amber Alert. But now all I need to do, if I'm a bad actor and I want to target a group, is just change the list that gets my texts. Mm. So you go into an area, uh, let's say you're a targeted individual, you go into an area, I send out a, a yellow alert. Now yellow isn't going to be seen at the same level as amber, um, but it's going to be seen by certain groups. Um, and now you are looked at as a suspicious person. They do not ever see, oh, this is Amelia Duran. She's a wonderful person. She's a radio host. She's got 500 different journalists on her network, and, you know all these concerned citizens groups no they see Jer- Amelia and then they put whatever your top line prism description is which is um, known subversive <laughs> you know known child trafficker well it, mm-hmm. it poisons the well with these private groups these private groups get paid based on inter- in, uh, intersecting with you crossing your path basically mm-hmm. the whole idea in, in low intensity is to cross a person's path get in their way create noises you know just get you know constantly bother them so they can't sleep they never have a moment of peace they're always having trash thrown in front of them or noises or being treated shabbily in a restaurant etc that's the idea mm-hmm. and these folks they don't know anything about you all they know is they're getting paid a really good wage from dhs and if i write an application let's say like pokemon uh or whatever that you know you go get the pokemon you know, and you get mm-hmm. points. Why wouldn't? Why couldn't I use that same application, that same code for harassment? Mm-hmm. Instead of being all happy, oh, I got the Pokemon. You basically drop a piece of trash in front of the person, or swear, or yell, or or do something to accost the senses of the target. Yeah, what so. a lot of people don't know about about the Amber Alert, um, they don't put out Amber Alerts for civilians. So if you have a civilian child that is that's gone missing, they they don't put out an Amber Alert. Amber Alerts are only for children that go missing within state custody. So you, let's say for instance you have a child that's been taken by CPS 
and you as a parent goes and tries to to take that child back um, from the foster parent or from the CPS office, if you will, um, they will put out an Amber Alert. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's 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 terrible. Well, um, you know, we only what the DOD puts out and what CIA puts out, or JTTF is basically the CIA in, in the United States, which is an infiltration and in, kind of into the FBI. We only we don't know about yellow. We're not trained in yellow, right? Mm-hmm. We don't know about red or what red means either. Uh, but there 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 are those other two colors too. Uh, it scares me to think what red means, um, but I I, uh, I think that we've got a situation where all your information is collected on you. It's 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 kept by a pretty extreme group of a pretty extreme sect uh, in uh, Utah uh, through Booz Allen, this FLDS church, which has nothing whatsoever to do with the LDS church, other than they recruit out they recruit targets out of LDS church yeah they target you out of the Mormon church it's see that's where everybody gets confused because it's the FLDS which is the fundamentalist Latter-day Saints and they are targeting actually people in the LDS church with normal Mormons basically Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, I mean it's it's really uh, this is the Evan McMullen wing of the CIA where it's it's literally you know pull wings off flies to see you know when the fly dies and Mm -hmm. uh, you know just this morbid uh, fascination the cia has with death constantly you know Mm -hmm. new new diseases new viruses new cancers always 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 you know just thinking these things up so they can think up a cure and we're going to make money we'll release this virus and all that kind of just totally macabre sick mind this is why kennedy said in and arthur schlesinger who researched it for him said the CIA is sick, and, and that's why Kennedy wanted to break into a thousand pieces. Well, that was 50 years ago. The last person to challenge the CIA was John F. Kennedy 50 years ago, 52 years ago, mm-hmm. or 55 now. So all we've done since then is improve the systems for collecting information about the targets and also co- improving the targeting system, right? We can intercept your emails and mess those up. We can intercept you physically mess up your your relationship we can mess up your house we can mess up your car we can mess up your job situation all very subtle all very very subtly but over time it degrades the person or decomposes the person and like i say you're always offering drugs you're always offering uh, prostitution you're always offering some kind of thing that's morally reprehensible or at least looked down on by the flds Mm-hmm. The FLDS teams then come in and go, well, this person deserves to die. And the person I'm, you know, uh, you know, beholden to is, is God, not, uh, you know, the laws of the land. And that's exactly how the system works. On the East Coast here, it's the Brotherhood. Uh, now, there's, like I said, there's 7,000 of these things. So mm-hmm. not just FLDS. It's not just the Brotherhood here. It's, it's hundreds of groups. But this whole idea is what I call gangs for security. Somehow thinking that if you have a gang that rules a neighborhood and you have control of that gang, somehow that creates order, right? You know, and this is kind of sick because it's like, okay, well, anybody except will use this gang well, through through us, through DHS, we'll use this gang to, to get them, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's really what we've got. And we really need to just, Trump just needs to unplug the private security firms immediately stop paying any private security firm and then half 99% of this problem will go away because you're paying people to target you're paying people to harass you're paying people for when people commit suicide yeah you're paying people when they die of overdoses for opiate overdoses Mm -hmm. that's that's the wrong set of incentives it's just like the bush days when they were paying to put people you know in private prisons and They've really worked. DHS has really worked on this private prison thing where they're just like, we want them to stay in the prison. You know, we want them to. Yeah. And they're recruiting straight out of child protective services that, you know, it's a pipeline straight to the prison. Once these kids are in the prison system, you know, 70 percent of human trafficking, 70 to 80 percent of human trafficking victims come out of child protective services. 
Well, it's it's a natural. They're, they've got somebody who's emotionally abused. They're young. They're impressionable. They've got. They're looking at a long stretch of prison time. They feel like they're cut off from the whole world. That's the perfect person to target if you need an operative. And they give you a choice: be an operative or be a victim. You have a choice. Mm-hmm. So that's that's an unfortunate situation. I try to stay away from the kids too much because it's just such an emotional topic that it's it's hard to. I try to focus on more the adult uh, victims, but uh, mm-hmm. or targets, but but well, the there these these you know I interview a lot of these kids that come out of the foster system on my show, and I I I got to tell you they are they are the most targeted people probably they are like more targeted I think than regular TIs are because they are coming out of that system. You know, well, it's, it's you almost like it, concentration camp to concentration camp. You know, if you, you think can't about see it, the bars. The, the child is a tremendous profit center, especially when you start bringing fentanyl in, in the case of, especially aerosol fentanyl. Aerosol, now, fentanyl has been aerosol, I think, for 45, 50 years. The whole idea was, okay, you got these Russian agents, they're doing bad stuff. We want to be able to spray the room and be able to go in and see what they're doing on their, in their in their private papers and later their laptops and so forth. So they perfected this thing where you still are breathing, but you're dead to the world. You know, unconscious. You're slightly cooperative. Well, it turned out to be the best drug rape drug ever because you're... The person is compliant, but doesn't remember anything mm-hmm. with this fentanyl, this aerosol fentanyl. So when I have a party, the kid just thinks he's in the hot tub, right? The kid never realizes he fell asleep, and he never realizes he was he was raped. And if I have ten people at the party, that's I I ten x my profits, you know, for that evening. And p- people don't think this happens. This is a whole underworld. It reminds me of that movie with Kate. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, the you know underworld you know oh with uh, Kate it's not Kate um I know who you're it's not talking Kate Winslet about. but it's the other one it's the other uh, not Kate, Kate Blanchett but it's uh she's a European actress I know I can't think of her last name yeah she's the English actress yeah. yeah but anyway the the uh um but you know there's this whole underground world that happens when the lights go out mm-hmm. from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. or maybe 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. That's when all of everything happens. That's when the drugs move. That's when the it's almost like, you know, those nocturnal worlds, you know, that they would have on Wild Kingdom, you know, and they would show the would, when low light cameras were first invented. And I always, these. you know, like for me, I always think, well, all of these people think they're being abducted by aliens, you know. <laughs> well, it, you you would have to the human mind wants an explanation. Why does it feel like I've been raped by uh, a, a lacrosse team? when I get up in the morning, why am I so completely tired and all my body is, you know, feels like I've been through a beating. Mm -hmm. Why is that? And you, 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 you want to figure it out. You want, you want answers. You want to search for answers. Yeah. So this is why don't send your kids away to the, on the weekend. Don't send them. I, I know how it's, how it sounds, but don't go to parties. Don't stay late at parties. Uh, go home, be the one that goes home early. Don't stay over, don't drink too much where you have to stay over. Um, trust me, fentanyl has been around for 45 years. A guy named Frank Olson developed it. What way is back is in the fentanyl 50s. like? Is that like a byproduct of like devil's breath? The the. Um... Well, I don't know what devil's breath is, but what I mean, if you look at the history of opium and, uh-huh. and kind of the CIA's trade in it, and before that, it was it was the British Empire. I mean, the British Empire built their whole empire on opium. I mean, it's just not taught in the schools, but. You know, you can sell a tea chest for one dollar, or buy it for one dollar in India and sell it for five dollars in China. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's pretty good profit. George Bush said that's amazing how much money you can make on four percent up uh, of markup. So that shows you his math skills. But you don't have to be a math whiz. You mm-hmm. buy the tea chest for one dollar in India and sell it for five in China, in Hong Kong or Singapore. And the, the refining opium has been where the concentration has been to increase the profit. Mm-hmm. And the more you can, you got the one tea chest, you can either do opium leaves or scrapings, or you can do refined morphine, which is the first reduction, or you can go to heroin, which is the second reduction, or you can go to fentanyl, which is the third reduction. Some of these more, you know, mm-hmm. esoteric, highly powerful versions. 
and the value goes up. So in that same T-chest, in our same volume of shipping volume, your value just rockets. And the problem with that is it's so much more volatile. If you make a mistake, if your cutter makes a mistake, people die. Uh, and we've seen that. We've seen a, a 500%, 540% increase in opium deaths over, over three years. The New York Times came out with a piece this summer in June of 2017. And they said, we're off the charts for 2017. The early numbers are in for 2017. It blows away the 500% increase. So we're literally on a vertical line right now. If you see the line, it's almost vertical. Because it's, it's you know, it, it's becoming, it's, you know, for me, I mean, I've, I've lived a very kind of unique kind of shut in lifestyle where, you know, I do a lot of my art and my work and I work from home and, you know, I live very like, I, I have a very, I don't tell people where I'm going, when I'm going, you know, <laughs> yeah. really. Yeah. And or if I I tell them afterwards after I've already gone and and you know it's it's a but to hear to hear that this is happening like more and more prevalently to more and more people and it occur, you know it occurred to me that wow the human trafficking is really escalating I mean locally into local communities and you know I'm data mining and I'm profiling these cases. And it's not civilians that are committing these these crimes. Oh, well, it's all DO degenerated. I mean, they, again, they think of this as security. But let me ask you, if you go to your local DHS grant, they give these block grants. It's not only militarized with all these, you know, uh, big vehicles, these 20 ton vehicles and, and all these bulletproof vests and armor piercing bullets and M16s. And, but it's also night vision goggles. It's also um, these lightweight, breathable uh, gas masks. It's also fentanyl uh, grenades. It's also, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, and they're training youth. They mainly go after training youth. So these cadet programs are what they use typically. And they want to get these kids committing crimes early before your brain kind of has them, this kind of prefrontal cortex to be able to make, you know, moral decisions. Mm -hmm. They want the boys, especially, they want the boys at about 15 because they'll do anything that if the sergeant tells them something mm -hmm. and it even enough, you know, blanks out for Harambe, they'll they'll pull their blank out for Harambe. You know, they don't argue, if, especially if it's kind of an alpha male yelling at them. They'll pull their blank out for Harambe and um, and they'll rape the girl. And the uh, you know, I, I the teams typically are three. Sometimes you have six, mm -hmm. but typically three. There's two that are kind of in training always. There's one kind of handler that's kind of like a trustee. Usually teams of three and a, and a Harambe, and this is happening right now in America. People think covert action doesn't happen. It does, and you have to practice. You have to practice, practice, practice. Otherwise, when the day comes when there's an insurrection, nobody knows what to do. But this is Especially this is a this is a reality. This is a culture that's sort of the undercurrent underneath the Disneyland sort of facade, if you will. Um, I don't know how to, I mean, I know it's, it seems far-fetched, but if you, if you just look at it and say, go to your local cadet training camp or whatever, little police training camp in the summer, and look at what they have. Mm -hmm. They have Narcan. Narcan is an antidote to fentanyl. Um, now, they're going to say that's for quick treatment of, you know, victims who've overdosed. Well, mm -hmm. okay, that's a good cover because they're, they're not uh, under, uh, they're not under fentanyl when they go into a place. This was all developed in the 70s. Um, the British intelligence, MI6 used it quite a bit in, in, in Ireland. A lot of it was used in Israel, uh, which I'm more familiar with. And... Uh, you know, you have a little uh, device that you can put under the door to deposit late at night, uh, or you have a bit of an ability to, to intercept the uh, fan and the uh, air conditioner, fan, the blower and the, and the heater. There's a whole bunch of different delivery mechanisms to, you know, sedate everyone in, in the house. I can, there's the port and down experiments in, in London did this in the 50s, whole communities where you, you could spray a whole community and then you go more localized and you drive by with cars and do a little... Yeah, I remember that story. There was one incident where they like sprayed LSD on a whole community 
and they thought it was the bread or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was in France. That was in southern France. And yeah. there was actually the one community that I think uh, resisted uh, CIA um, kind of in, intrusion into an area. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, it was not the bread. I mean, um, you you have to you have to realize that it's it's sort of the the um, the coincidences of everything that's occurring. You have to look at what occurred in France, um, you know, with the Jacobins, and you know, I think it was Robespierre during that whole thing, and and, and then we see these fires. In Los Angeles, and we, we have more and more frequent trafficking going on. I mean, I personally, you know, can see the the similarities of some of these crimes that are occurring currently right now. Well, I don't want to come off as a conspiracy theorist because New York Times called me that, and uh, you know, CNN called me that, and uh, Washington Post called me that. So none of all your listeners have to keep this quiet because I'm a normal journalist by day. And, and I just have this conversation every once in a while when people want to know about the more serious uh, covert activities. Um, so don't tell anybody about at major newspapers about this conversation. But this. Well, you're is, on live radio. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But just keep it quiet amongst your one million followers. OK, uh, the uh, but. But if people do want to know about covert activities, prowler teams, the Secret Service had a prowler team program, red teams, CIA has had red teams. If you think about it, you have to develop these programs for certain countries where we don't have clearance, you know, to have a hot war. We need the, the subtle war. We need to go in, we need to put all the drug dealers to sleep. We need to take all their weapons from them and then arrest them when they wake up. Right. I get that. I understand the DEA use of this and, and so forth. The problem comes when those guys retire and then they get recruited into these p private uh, corporations. That's when the problem comes in. When you have a prowler team on your local police department that ne that really aren't police, that they're 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 criminals that have been given. They're secret in. police and secret. Yeah, yes, exactly. They're extension of the uh, of the CIA in the United States, and that's the problem. It, they look like police. They sound like police. They have badges. They have guns. But they're not police, mm -hmm. and they're running around setting up these parties, the sex parties. And I worked the long and the hours. Courts, serial the killing. courts are totally complicit with this, all of this. You well, know. it's tough for a judge. You know, here comes here comes forward. There's usually one good guy or one front man uh, for every prowler team, and he looks great, and he's got all the credentials, and he sometimes doesn't even know what the team is doing inside. He's the guy who gets to sit in the car. Mm -hmm. And he goes in front of the judge, and he, God, he looks great, and he's uh, honest, and he talks straight to the jury, looks him straight in the eye, because he doesn't know what's going on inside. And the and the and the guys on the team don't tell him; they're smart enough to know that. You always have one, you know, really great uh, looking guy that. Just and then, looks and like then you have these yeah. attorneys. These attorneys, you can pay them like five grand, and they'll put you on the targeted list, and they'll evict you from your house. They'll get you like. You know, they'll get you, they'll, they'll get you trumped up on some phony fake charges, you know, just all kinds of stuff. And local, and local communities that need money, you go to those police forces and you say, hey, I got a great way to make money, right? It's like, you know, have all these traps for drunk driving, have all these, you know, go ahead and advertise all the beer specials you want. Matter of fact, half the time, you know, they're friends of the pe people who are in the police force, right? Because <laughs> we want kids drunk, you know? And get them started. And I, I personally witnessed this in Zanesville, Ohio, mm -hmm. where these kids were getting put away. And, uh, you know, um, the FBI, by the way, uh, I was working a case saying, speaking of uranium that's in the news now, I said that there's an illegal uranium trade being orchestrated by the FBI. That time in June 15th of this year, one said, oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. Well, the disclosures of the last couple of days, I think, has dispelled that myth uh, that Mueller and McCabe have been doing this for quite some time. Um, and we'll, we'll see how that all turns out. But, but anyway, they, they, they like to throw around this word. Let's just t let's just pro uh, tackle this subject. Let me interject just a second. Sure. They like to throw around this word conspiracy theorist. And I myself, you know, I do something sort of similar to what uh, to what you do, but I do it in more of a my job, what I try to perceive myself as, is dumbing it down into like small 
MEMS. So I'm data mining these cases, right? And after after a while, it builds up and it, it paints a bigger picture. Um, you that's not yeah. conspiracy theorist, and and I just want to say this for my listeners out there. George Webb does something very similar to what I do, except on a very a lot of on a on another spectrum, and he does an absolutely thorough job. I mean, I I was blown away. To, to be honest, I'm like, this is incredible. I mean, you, you get, this guy's like a genius. <laughs> huh. and, uh, you'd be surprised how smart you people think you are when you repeat what smart people say, <laughs> which is what I do. I repeat what my contributors say and, uh, and I take the best and I do that five times a day. And, um, and you, you'd be surprised how smart you sound after you repeat smart people. That's all I can say. But, but what you're saying is, is very true. Uh, it's it, but it's not so transactional. The only thing I'd say it's different. You don't pay the attorney five thousand to get on the crap list. What you do is you have a tips line in your local neighborhood, and you have a neighborhood watch. And you start saying, "Hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do that." They need to cr- create this parallel. And these are like community watch. Com- what yeah. what the layman thinks- would refer to as like a community watch, or neighborhood for watch. us, it's, it's like a few. It's called a fusion center, and there's one in every city, every county. There, well, the fusion centers are are in every state. Usually, every state capital in every large city. So there's about mm-hmm. 100 or 85, I think, something like that. But each city has each neighborhood has their own neighborhood watch. Mm. And what you do is you call 1-800-TIPS and you say, so-and-so is suspicious. He's putting up a radio antenna in his backyard. He looks suspicious to me. Now they, the police have probable cause. So see how it's kind of a dodge of our constitution, right? Mm. So now I can add to that file. Once I get you on that file, I have to have somebody else get you on the file. If you're on the target list, somebody else still has to put you on there. Now I can have somebody else come in and say, oh, by the way, you know, there's a, he put three wires on the antenna and he looks like he's transmitting, you know, secrets or something, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it accretes, it accretes so that you're built, you, you constantly build up this file. Well, you have other people looking at your communications. Is he, you know, talking, is he lonely? Did he just lose his girlfriend? Let's offer him sex. Is he, you know, <laughs> did, let, 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 let's offer him drugs. Let's, you know, introduce these Yeah. People. Intercept. Intercept. Yeah. 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 And, and there are people who, you know, I mean, I'll I get right it. Now. I get it all the time. Yeah. I I get yeah. I get like you know I I'll get, have these guys walk on the scene, and this is why I've stayed single for six years. To be honest with you, I'm talking to you a little bit personal right now, um, <laughs> because it's the same script over and over yeah. again. Yeah, and it's 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 slight. It's 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 clever in the sense it's it's compartmentalized. But I would be interested in hearing the script. Go ahead. I'm sure your listeners want to hear it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just, it's always, you know, it's, it's, I, they, they, you know, they, they, just like you say, they, they, they watch your emails, they see who you're talking to. And usually if I date or if I even get into a relationship, immediately I get cheated on or or they're intercepted by you know whatever so yeah i mean it's always the same script and it's been that way all my life and so i just learned you know look i don't want to keep living this script it's really awful and painful (laughs) well i mean you can imagine how easy this is right uh you have a person who's let's say ever been arrested for drugs and they're looking at at five years because they were selling and i say look if you work with me as an informant um, and they call this deferred prosecution agreements or DPAs. If you work with me as an informant, when it comes time around for your sentencing, I'll consider that. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know, you're, we're gonna you're gonna play a role. You get this, it's called role players. You're gonna be a, a role player, and uh, they have surveillance role players and different different role players. So here's the role. We're gonna teach you. We're gonna go to a course over the weekend. You're gonna be a role player. You're gonna be the honeypot role player, and you're gonna your job is to go home with this guy, okay? We know that Amelia is dating this guy. Now, they're not going to tell her this. They're just going to say, there's the target. They point with her elbow. They do some kind of thing. There's the guy. Make sure that, you know, when she goes to the bathroom, you get in there, give her your phone number, right? It could be just that simple, or it could be the hard clothes, you know, go home with them tonight. Mm. But, you know, that happens. And, and what's happening to you when you're constantly being 
you know, cheated on is that people, you know, they're watching this and, hey, okay, we need to break this up. It's constantly trying to diffuse. The, the key is anytime anybody is, is in a comfort zone, you want to get them uncomfortable. So you, if they're happy in a relationship, break up that relationship. If they've got a wife, break that up. If they got a job, break that up. If they got a nice car, break that up. Slowly, not all at once. Have little things go wrong with it, so they finally are, are bicycling and break the bike. And, have and then the other thing is is, you know? is old scripts, like something I did huh? in my twenties, like really stupid. You know, they they it, it, I can never live it down. <laughs> Well, how did the, how would that come up? I mean, just people bringing it up to you and I just and, and yeah, kind of, they, they like random like people will just know something I did as a kid just to creep you out. You know, they they want to yeah. get you to react. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all psychological operations. Is you want to create an environment where everybody is against me, you know, and create this paranoia. You want it, they want to get you to a doctor. Key thing they want to do is get a, a like a schizophrenia diagnosis, and they want to get you on the drugs. That way, when you do commit suicide, when they do get the target to commit suicide, it's like, well, they were mentally ill, they were having mental troubles, and they were off their medication. That's yeah. the classic. They were off their medication. Well, we've heard that one before. It's a meme, and you know, you move on. You read in the paper, oh, they're off their medication. I'll tell you. Um, well, I was in Ohio. I was talking about this secret uranium trade. The FBI came down and hunted me down. It says it right. J uh, Chris Whitaker, JTTF, hunted me down. Came up with a parallel construction, lured me out of a hotel. I fell asleep in my car. They arrested me for, you know, sleeping in my car. Um, and I had a chance over two days to spend it with these kids getting sentenced, going up and getting sentenced for opiate uh, possession. And they were giving them 180 days. Boom, 180 days. One beautiful girl, 20, 21 years old, mother. Mm -hmm. The judge just screaming and yelling at her. Um, no attorney. They didn't tell anybody they had an attorney. They're, you're in a small room with a, you know, a police officer behind you, video only. And uh, she came out with that look in her eye like she wasn't going to see her baby for another 120 days. And I could tell, you know, she, she wasn't. You know, I'd seen her. We'd talked. Uh, she wasn't a bad mom. You know, she wasn't out there doping up all the time. She she just, all she thought about was her baby. Yeah. And uh, I had some conversations with her, and I felt just horrible because I said, why couldn't we have a social worker check on her three times a day, just come in in the morning, come in in the afternoon, come in at well, that's that's the thing. That's you know. the thing is they they take the kids. They really, they really try to break you down. I mean, at the very least, if they can break you just to where they can recruit you while you're in jail into the human trafficking, that's 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 profit for them. That's that's at least something. That's value. Yes. Um, if they yes. can get you to commit suicide, or they can, you know. Orchestrate these elaborate, you know, things, or or intercept relationships, or um, you know, like if for example, my, I I always know it's like I'm not psychic. I just know like when when there is a cute guy coming around and he's being charming and and wanting to ingratiate himself into my life, and I always know it's like okay, when's the shoe gonna drop? <laughs> yeah. Well, see. The what you want you want the men to suicide you want to keep the hot girls right yeah because the, you can they can the traffic girls are you worth more money yeah yeah they're worth a yeah. lot more money than the guys you want the you want the guys assets you want the guys business you want the guys uh, house etc you don't want uh, but you want to keep the girls and keep the kids especially kids are really valuable it's just like almost farming really you know you shoot the yeah you know, the, exactly uh, and and really to be honest if you get really down into it, it's not the satanic thing that most people think. It's more the farming attitude. But it's the I'm, mind. It's the mindset that 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 does it. It's this the duality or the satanic nature. I guess is is what people tend to. It they feel it. It resonates. You know, when you're in those situations and you're being targeted, and it's all staged. It is satanic. At the lower levels, it is, yes. At the lower levels, there is some kind of a charge or a rush to, to know that somebody's pleading for their life and they're going to die, you know. And, and there is, you know, if you look at the humiliation cycle that they put people through before they kill them, 
there's no other reason why you would do that other than you get a charge out of somebody pleading for their life. And, you, and, and I, you know, and that's, that's life. the other thing too. I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's the other thing too. Like we see these humiliation rituals all the time with some of pub, the public figures like Paris Hilton, Kim Kardashian, you know, they, they have these Pamela Anderson, they have these, uh, videotapes of them having sex exposed. These are humiliation rituals that are, that are happening, happening publicly. But this, this would happen to a human traffic victim all the time. They, they would be literally, it would literally be passed around to everyone. And, and, and as well as with our actors and actresses, they're, they're, you know, they may be at a, at an audition and that audition is filmed and it gets passed around the, 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 the recording. It's so, it's, it's a lot more prevalent and, and, um, really embedded in our culture than I think people really realize or can wrap their heads around yeah I, I i go back to the underworld movie or there's a lot of these movies you know where all this stuff happens at at 3 a.m to 5 a.m well if you're asleep how can you say that it doesn't right mm-hmm. um but why all the need for all the narcan and night goggles you know and and uh, all these home invasion uh technologies but anyway the um uh, I, I would just say that people keep an open mind. Just ask yourself why the why the fusion center is there. What information are they collecting? Why does the you know FLDS church need every one of your phone calls? Need every one of your emails that you've ever written? All your Skype sessions? All your photos you've ever sent to anybody? Why does the FLDS church and, and Booz Allen need that? Mm. These are not the U.S. government. These are not people sworn to take care of information. They're private contractors. That's what people don't understand. As soon as you introduce that profit motive, people are going to come up with all kinds of reasons why you're evil and need to die. You know, and yeah, that, and if that's you're really if you're Mormon, you really have to ask yourself why why do they have to you know come to your house every day? Why do they have to check you in at church and 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 make sure that you're present? And um, it, it's 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 on that level like it's really on that level people need to open their eyes you guys need to wake up um a lot of people they don't see it and they're so heavily heavily brainwashed that they yeah. they just accept it as norm i think really i mean what i try to do is um uh, and i'm sure they'll <laughs> parts of this will be replayed at <laughs> at the trial that I'm about ready to do or the lawsuit I'm about ready to do, which is, is very different. It's it's about spying and it's about uh, intercepting email from Congress and, and intercepting uh, phone calls from Congress, which is very, very humdrum compared to all the stuff we're talking about. But in, but in a sense, you know, that is the where you have to start. You have to start saying, look, you 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 can't collect it all, NSA. You can't collect it all. Every person's phone call, I mean, we kind of had a little bit of a national discussion about that when Snowden disclosures came out. And then everybody said, no, let's renew it. So everybody renewed 702. So this is the thing where we have to go back. You know, uh, uh, Ray of the FBI, the new FBI director, just made a speech in front of uh, the police chiefs in Philadelphia. And he said, there's 6,900 phones out there we can't crack because of encryption. That's a real problem. Mm -hmm. Well... Why don't you get a search warrant first? You know, it's called illegal search and seizure, you know, and then you can hire Cellbrite or some Israeli company to crack the phone, uh, which they can do fairly easily. But they they just want to fight this encryption. They want to fight anything that would give people a a private, uh, you know, the satellite is another thing. I mean, the technology for spraying someone with a with what they call a tag ant, a T-A-G-G-A-N-T. You do this in, in battle all the time. You, t- you spray the enemy, then you can see their movements. It used to be just for vehicles. You could see the car tracks and people. Well, no, now it's and... programmable matter. It's 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 totally programmable. So, let's say okay, we spray that person, and they have these um, the smart dust that that's programmable, or even remote. They can program it remotely. If you look into some of this technology, it's really. <laughs> well, so 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 what you're talking about with the smart dust, most of the stuff is passive. They, they push the smart dust to make everybody kind of seem conspiratorial. But mm-hmm. most of it, most of the tags, you know, stay on your shoes, stay on your, your clothes, stay on your coat. 
and they 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 want you to wear the same coat every day. They want you to wear the same shoes because this stuff fl- fluoresces, right? This is all you know from satellites. You, these low, these little cubic satellites are only four inches by four inches. They're little co- cube sats, they call them. They can then they burn up in the atmosphere when they fall into the atmosphere, but they can do some nice stuff mm-hmm. with this with these tags. And we've had this technology a long time. So I, I drink this you, stuff. It's a protocol, and, it, and it's it's made from mineral salt. And what it does is it it forms mucus around foreign bodies in your body. So once a week, on the weekends, I'll purge. You know, I'll try to purge all this stuff out. And I I have done shows on it in the past, but we're we're being sprayed. It's in our food. I mean, it's just you have to you have to come to the realization that almost everybody's being exposed. I mean, well, and, and this is going to sound you know this sounds very conspiratorial, and uh, and uh, but I I, I I am totally agreeing with you. Tag ants are 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 uh, old news in military technology and Navy and the Navy lab here in, in Anacostia um, here in Maryland develops it and uh, you know they can luminesce on different frequencies and all that sort of thing the that's been around for tracking the enemy and the enemy's vehicles and the enemy's combatants for a long long time most of it's passive I, there is some smart rocks that they have you know they put around train trestles and or train tracks and stuff that have little transmitters that can communicate up to the next rock, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, passive, active transmitter technology. But I think it's more at the rock level right now. I don't think it's at the at the little tiny microchip level. Mm. Uh, but it might be. I don't. Yeah, I'm not, I don't work at the Navy lab. Uh, well, you know, and, and then but, and then they have you know this this programmable matter that's called black goo. And a lot of your, like, mainstream tattoo shops are using the ink, this ink, with this programmable oh, matter. I like that. That's and smart. it can, be, that's, that's it can cool. be programmed remotely. So let's say, and see, the people get addicted to getting uh, tattoos because, because they get actual high, initial high from the tattoo, which is programmed oh. into the ink. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, originally, I mean, tattooing is goes back to Egypt, right? For uh, keep a track of your slaves, right? Yeah. So it's the, the whole promotion of the, all the tattoo parlors and everything was just genius. Whoever came up with that, it's just genius because it's just the greatest, uh, you know, non-invasive identifier you could ever come up with. I know, now, and it's the, not. It's not the, like the, I mean, people. It's I, genius. I mean, <laughs> to influence a whole population and get them to do that on their own and pay money and wait in line, yeah. you know, and have to do, fill out a whole rule sheet about not bringing anything before. I mean, it's just it's genius. It really and now is. they can program it remotely. That's like people really need to wrap their heads around that. They can program. Now, sometimes they'll put out. Sometimes they'll put out disinformation just uh-huh. so it sounds conspiratorial. Now I do know that there's a program. Uh, uh, that Temporal Data Systems uses, uh, and this this F, uh, guy named Burrell, F, F, ex FBI guy, mm-hmm. and what they try to do is put like stuff that would be in an RFID chip, like in a, an expensive Yankees hat or something. Let's say it's got an RFID chip in it. Mm-hmm. That that basically is a passive device. But if I energize it, this is how you know Walmart knows you're you know that somebody's stealing something, right? Mm-hmm. It sends out a little signal and can be detected and. When you walk out of Walmart, so you know that technology exists, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that same technology, if it's a RFID chip in your Yankees hat, and this is the whole other thing about you know high-end sportswear, getting people to wear high-end sportswear, mm-hmm. is that you chip that and it it can handshake with the phone with your phone. So mm-hmm. now I have basically a chipped phone. Now, this yeah. is what they have in Pakistan, which is you know it's a, a biometric phone. You know, you're required to carry a biometric ID card in Pakistan, and you're you're required to carry a biometric phone. Mm. Now, if we tried to put that in in the United States, we'd have all kinds of ACLU and you know and EFF yeah. and right. But it's the same thing. I mm-hmm. just need to come up with a program to encourage you to wear it, and I always have biometrics on you. the The idea of the the idea that the NSA just wants to collect it all, but they don't want to know where you are. The NGA doesn't want to know where you are. Mm-hmm. Most people don't even know what the NGA is. We're at the same point where we were with Snowden before Snowden exposed the NSA. The NGA wants to know where you are. Long, lat, 
724-365. So the idea of you, you know, hiding for or running away, it's just, it's preposterous. Every person is tracked 724 mm-hmm. NGA, just like in NSA tracks everything you do communications mm-hmm. wise. It, it's yeah. it's not it's not conspiratorial at all. I mean, if you, I've I've had to I, I've actually had to educate myself in a lot of this stuff just because of you know who I am, the nature of my my own existence. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've actually interviewed some of the people that are in the uh, in the FBI, and these are this very sensitive conversations uh, that work with the NGA. Uh, to do this kind of tagging um, mm. and it's called the, the I'm going to forget the name of it so I better not say it but it's the, the, sort of the law enforcement data system and I can't remember exactly what the, the the acronym is right off the bat but it's developed in Clarksburg, West Virginia mm-hmm. and this concept of where are you right now and what what's your communications and then the other thing is you want a whole bunch of analysts always looking at your file always looking at the tags other people have put on your file, just like Facebook. Matter of fact, Mm -hmm. some people say Facebook could have come out of the surveillance system prism, right? But if I say Amelia is red-haired, boom, that's a tag. I can search on that tag now, that metadata. If I say she's hot, I can search on that, you know? If I want to, there may be somebody who wants to target hot redheads, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Or, you know, whatever, geographic or any other kind of selector is called and mm-hmm. people got introduced to selectors through the nsa uh with with again with uh, i think they prism had 132 different selectors but you could add selectors all the time um and this is how databases work they meta they work on metadata and you certain make search better yeah and they only get better and so the file on you only gets more specific about i was you. i was actually i learned about i learned about the mormons because I was advocating for a little girl that was um, a really, really rough case. I don't want to go into it too much in detail, but I, you know, I came and became really involved in the Mormon. I was Mormons. I was attending Mormon church. I learned so much. I mean, that was for me a very enlightening experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me let me just say it's it's going to be FLDS, and you're probably not familiar with it, but you'll you'll do a, the research on it. And, mm-hmm. and no, I, there I'm, are these, I'm I'm a, I, I know who you're talking about. And you know, they, they have these these farms where they ever the girls are raised from the time they're twelve, and they're mm-hmm. told that the guy who raises them is the president of the United States, and everybody and the tunnels, you know, for when the cops come around, and you know, the whole whole schmeal. And, you know, uh, mm-hmm. we've got one of the top FBI guys who's one of these devotees, which is really sick. Um, and it's just true. You know, it's just true. And, and, and the, do you, there, I know that, you know, I've, there's FLDS, something called the FLDS. finders. Do you know it? Yeah. Okay. Are they connected to the Mormons? You have a lot of finder groups. A finder is kind of like a generic term. Um, mm-hmm. the, the FLDS is going to be a finder group for certain states. For other states, you're going to have like a brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Brotherhoods mainly started around after the Civil War, and literally you were finding runaway slaves. It goes back to even before, but their job, mainly located in West Virginia, was to go find slaves. And they would have to go into, you know, Maryland or wherever, you know, New York, act like, you know, but there were teams, you know, that would work, and then they would get the routine and then they would figure out when they're going to abduct the slave so this is not new the brother has been around a long time but uh the other groups are more usually around drug drug centers the fbi uh, i'm sorry the cia wanted to introduce heroin uh you know after world war ii they did it mainly through uh, hell's angels motorcycle gangs the original refuge was indian indian re- reservations you get in trouble running the indian reservation so you had a lot of uh, drug centers and and hell's angel centers around dr- indian reservations mm-hmm. well guess what i can do child trafficking around that i just take the person the indian reservation <laughs> you know uh yeah gone you know and a lot of so so a lot of the finding came out of that um and it's just a crime network. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. It's a mm-hmm. crime network. 
And, you know, I mean, we could go into all the different cases of Hell's Angels, but it, it basically came out of drugs. And from drugs, everything follows from there. Yeah. It's like, well, um, you come it's, up with some It's so excuse. incredible. And I, yeah. I, know, I don't know. It's a crime network. Yeah. Crime network. Yeah. And it's just like any other mafia or whatever. You start somebody out with a premise of crime. Mm-hmm. And drugs is, is the is the thing that pays for everything. It's so profitable. You well, know, it's, people it's think, like oh. you were saying. It's like you were saying. You know, it, they don't. You you can have a store like you know selling orchids or flowers or what have you, but it's much more profitable to have a drug dealer, you know, a business <laughs> and uh, trafficking. Apparently, I I, I went to this uh, fruit place. And the Steve King's going to hate me for this saying this, Congressman Steve King. But I went to this fruit place in Ames, Iowa. And what, what did they do is they take all fruit coming in from all over the world and they send it through to spray it, right? Um, and you prefer irradiation and, and so forth, so they're not bringing in bugs, et cetera. Well, there's this fruit place that's just a, a, the straight, you know, commodity, selling fruit all over the world, vegetables, doing, a, you know, just great job. Across the street is this place that looks like a fortress, you can't come in all cameras and everything you i tried to go in there three people cut me off you know wanted to find out my name what why was i signing mm-hmm. in and they made this exotic fruit what they do is they take you know uh you know they put it in kind of like arrange it like flowers mm-hmm. you know and, and use fruit as kind of like flowers and then make these arrangements well to me that was the perfect drug thing mm-hmm. they're really super expensive arrangements right you go to a very select group of people, you know who is a receiver and who isn't a receiver, mm-hmm. and you send them the stash in the middle of the, the yeah. you know, whatever. The, and that's how it works. It's, 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 food is, is typically the number one distribution well, I, mean, I, I grew up in, I, you know, I, I actually grew up in some exclusive sort of, you know, in LA, you know, California, you know, some of the nicer suburban areas of LA, if you will. And, and yeah, I, I worked in Malibu and yeah, I see, uh, seen a lot of stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have the, 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 the problem with the CIA is they always want, it's kind of like, but they're watching. Uh, they're watching all this stuff going kill. on. I mean, they, they, they just want to kill. They were always testing their uh, their their slow kill. They're always testing it. Always want to make it slow kill even more gradual, even longer, even better. You know, and that just they they're just consumed with this. They're always researching the next best thing to slow kill. That's all they, they wanna, do. They get the loose. You know? They want to suck it's, the energy <laughs> off the person. You know. <laughs> well, you think about a car manufacturer. They always want it you know, a little bit more gas mileage, a little bit better performance, fast performance, a little bit better handling. That's how the CIA thinks about death. That is how the CIA thinks about death. They're completely consumed. They're sick. Well, you know, and and it's like now, it's like now they compromise the immune system right out the gate or out the womb. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, that, that's a whole nother, like they've got it down to a science to where they have, they pretty much know where our lifespan is, is going to be, you know, such and such, you know, you're going to die at such and such age. I mean, they have it, they have it all down to a science. Yeah, it depends on if you cross them. You can shorten it. You can shorten it. Um, but anyway, um, speaking of shortening, I probably have to get on this train. I got to yeah. go do a, a story. Yeah, thank you so much for coming uh, yeah. on the show. Oh my gosh, yeah. and I'd love to have you back again. Yeah, that was fun. Okay, Amelia. Um, remember, all listeners out there, don't tell anybody about my more, more conspiratorial stuff that happens between three a.m. and five a.m. I'm a mild man reporter during the day. <laughs> I'm not Batman. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks, George, Amelia. you're awesome. You're a superhero. Okay. Thank you so All much. Right. Have a great right, day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Wow. He's so he's so cool. I've been talking to him for, I think it's, I, I started talking to him a few days ago. And um, it, it feels good to talk to somebody that, you know, just he he he's just a wealth of information. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. This has been another episode of Porthole to Justice: The Window to the Truth. Off the cuff, I am signing off. I'm going to sign out with. Uh, let's see. 
I'll try and sign out with a uh, with Zeph Daniels deeper down. Let me go back. I gotta try to. I love that song. He's a genius composer, that man. Okay. Well, I don't know if I can find it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in.